Thanks for your help, Mr. Colton. No help, except to, to collect the dead. How many dead, Sheriff? Twenty all told, two infants, and two children. Apaches, huh? Apaches. And they got everybody. Sullivan. Know him? Yeah. I served with him in the war. I heard he was on his way here, and I planned to look in on him. Take a good look. Why can't they just kill a man? Why do they have to do that to him? That's where Sullivan's folks live. That's their home. Sullivan, my name is William Colton. I uh, knew your son in the army. Did you see him out there, where it happened? I was on my way into town when I saw the smoke. A few minutes later, the uh, sheriff and his men came around, but not in time. They got everybody in the wagon train, 20 all told. We were planning a party for him, for Joe. There'll be no party now. We're obliged to you, Mr. Colton, for dropping by. I'm deeply sorry, Mr. Sullivan, ma'am. Mr. Colton. Joe wrote to us about getting married, about acting as scout for the wagon train. But his, his wife was to join him here. She's coming in on tonight's stage. Got her baby with her. I wonder if I might ask you a favor, Mr. Colton. Ma'am. The Joe's wife. We've never even met her. Don't know nothing about her. Well, you knowing Joe and all. I wondered if you'd mind coming with me to meet her, her and her baby. Yeah, sure I will. If it's me you want there. You were Joe's friend. I don't know, it seemed it might be easier if somebody was with me. I understand. Don't even know what she looks like. Her name's Sue. We don't know what she looks like, don't know nothing about her. Joe didn't write to us much. Indians. Savage animals, that's what they are. Would to God they all die. All of them. D destroy them. Burn them. Kill them.
Mr. Sullivan, I'm Sue. Where's Joe? Mr. Colton, would you do me one other favor? Tell this squaw my son is dead. Then tell her to go on back where she came from. Sullivan. Mrs. Sullivan. What did he mean his son is dead? Yes, this morning. I'll uh, tell you all about it. Do uh, you have some baggage? Well, I need baggage. Do you think I shall be staying? Joe told me his mother and father would understand. Not to write them that I was an Indian. It would take time. That's all that was needed, time. Yes. Yes, it will take time. It'll take time, Mrs. Sullivan. But you're their, you're their son's wife. It's, it's their grandchild. What happened this morning? What happened to Joe? There was a massacre outside of town this morning. Apaches intercepted a wagon train. There were 20 dead. Joe was one of them. Apaches. Redskins. You say his mother and father will understand. That it will take time, but they will understand. His father did not look at me with the eyes of a man looking at his son's widow. I am his son's murderer. Is there a place I may stay? There's a hotel here. An Indian in their hotel. Well, you can use my room. Just for the night, Mr. Colton, until I can leave this place. My baby and me. This way, Mr. Sullivan. Well, is there anything else I can do for you? I mean, anything that you might need? Nothing more, Mr. Colton. For tears? Haven't you heard of the stoic Indian? We are carved out of rock. We do not cry. trying to get my wife to eat some supper. She won't take a thing. You've had yours, have you? I have some sandwiches and some milk. Oh, uh, no, thanks. <laughs> Squaw leave, did she? Mrs. Sullivan's at the hotel. And how are Mrs. Sullivan's accommodations? To her liking, I trust. I'd say she's as comfortable as possible considering that she's been slapped across the face a couple of times today. A couple of times? Yes. First by a death, 
And then by a denial. Denial? Meaning that I wasn't about to take her and that kid into my home. Is that what you mean by a denial? Yes, that's what I mean. In one ten-second period, she found out that her husband was massacred and that his parents couldn't bring themselves to hold out their arms to her and to her child. And it wasn't because they were in mourning and couldn't spare the time. No, no. No, they had no trouble lifting a fist. You've stated your business, Mr. Colton. Only trouble is it really isn't your business. Yes, it is. You made it my business. You told me to meet your son's widow, then you backed off and left me with her. You made her my responsibility. Take it, then. Put her back on a stage, or buy her a wagon, or just point out the direction those Apaches rode off. It won't make any difference. She's not of the same tribe. An Indian's an Indian. They fit together. Now, was there something else? Yes. Just a question, Mr. Sullivan. If your son were alive, would you have turned all three away? My son ain't alive. The only blessing I can dredge up to go along with that death is he was dead drunk or out of his mind when he married that woman. Thank God it never came to be that I had to close my door on him. The door's the same one you came in. Use it now if you will, Mr. Colton. Sully? 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 The rancher's brought in an Indian. When we finish with him, we're gonna stick a sign in his chest, tie him to a horse, and send him out in the desert. And that's where his friends are gonna find him. Oh, ho, ho. just one Indian, Sully. But it'll make the point. You'll have to forgive Mr. Colton here, John. He's got a thing about Indians. He doesn't mind collecting the bodies of their victims and helping to load them on wagons, but an hour later, He'd like to invite them to a party. Well, is that a fact, Colton? You like Indians, huh? Prefer them to white men, maybe. I like some Indians. And I prefer them to some white men, yes. That don't mean present company, does it? <laughs> You're a fierce man, Mr. Uh... Stinnett. Mr. Stinnett. And I found out that fierce men you leave alone in time of grief and anger. And around here, grief and anger are about the same thing. Anybody, uh, anybody asked this Indian whether he was in the massacre party? I don't think anybody asked him anything. He's an Indian, and that's good enough for us. That ain't good enough for you. That means you ain't on our side. Well, it's not good enough for me. He got us an Indian. Should he be out there? You're the sheriff of this town, aren't you? Oh, just retired, did you? For the night, I did. For this night, anyway. Yes. This is Sullivan's meet, Bill Colton. Come in. What will that do? What? Shutting out the noise. Will that make us forget what's happening down there? No, ma'am, but we'll be able to talk. What do we talk about, Mr. Colton? The late war? The Indian school in Montana where I learned to wear dresses and shoes and speak the language of the civilized white man? Civilized white men, Mr. Colton, whose language on occasion can be heard through closed windows. Mrs. Sullivan, I'm not an opponent, so I don't feel that I have to apologize for the savages of my race any more than you have to for yours. Now listen, I came here to tell you that I think it'd be a lot safer if you left town. Now you better pack up. We'll go out the back door and over to the stable. I've rented a wagon. And go where, Mr. Colton? 
someplace safe, which is anywhere out of this town. Another town would be safer. Another town would welcome us. Mrs. Sullivan, there is no time for me to explain to you. I'm making it myself. What makes men mistake vengeance for justice? But it happens that on occasion they do make that mistake. Now, listen, we could stand here until dawn and discuss the phenomenon of prejudice. But part of that phenomenon is that if you stick good men into a mob, take away their names, faces, identity, take away their responsibility, they're no longer good men. And when they get finished trying to make that Indian boy down there scream, they're going to go elsewhere for their pleasure. It might be a hotel room. All right, Mr. Cole. I'll go. At the end of a rope. <laughs> no, don't sleep yet. A little message, Indian boy. You are payment number one for a wagon train. Thanks, friend. Don't thank me. Just get the wagon out of here and stay off the main street. And remember, if you're caught, I didn't rent you this. You come in here while I was having supper and took it. That's what you promised. That's what I promised. Mr. Sullivan, come on. Mr. Cole, please look after my baby. Mr. Sullivan! Don't you take your eye off that baby. <laughs> Thirsty little Indian. Are you? Huh? Huh? <laughs> He was not on the raid this morning. That was a war party detached from the main body. The tribe is on its way south to a new hunting ground. Well, listen to her. One Indian talking for another Indian. <laughs> what else does he tell you, squaw lady, that he has a sweet disposition? That he's supporting a widowed mother? Huh? <laughs> hey, now we've got two of them. Let's do the same thing to her. Now, you men have had your fun. Why don't you all go home? All right, then, all of you, get over here. Find a bar. Move! Put your hands up! Go on, Puma! Watch it! Get over there. Apply! Over there. All of you. Over there! 
No, Sheriff. The fun ain't over. It's got a whole night to run yet. And, mister, I told you about picking sides. Now we got one tied up, another ready to go, and you could be number three. Yeah? Who wants to try it? I'll take at least four of you along with me. Who wants to try it? You want an Indian. This is an Indian. The tribe is different, but the flesh is red. The blood is pure savage. I trade you now, myself for the boy. Mr. Sullivan. Will you keep the baby? She is blonde like Joe. She has blue eyes. This way you can have a part of your son who will come with no shame to you at all. Oh. Well, looks like you got what you wanted. I think your Indian is dead. squares it away. It does for me, anyway. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And the good people of Smithtown. The child. The child looks like Joe. Is that what you said? Just like Joe. You. You want to leave her here with us. Is that right? I did. I did want to leave her. But there's no longer any need. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you've got courage. I'll give you that. But wherever you take that kid, you're going to have trouble. So long as you're around, I, I've got to say it just like this. It'll be an Indian child. Colton, tell her what you can expect. Tell her what kind of chance an Indian child has out here. I think she knows better than you. Much better. She'll have her mother, Mr. Sullivan. She'll have love and she'll have pride. But I'll make you this promise. If you want, someday, when she's grown up, I'll bring her back so you can meet her. When she's grown up, Mr. Sullivan, and perhaps when you are, Goodbye, Mr. Colton. Bless you for your help. Ride safely, Mrs. Sullivan. She talks real good for an Indian. Real good. She could teach some of us. She already has. 